Oh, that turned out sweet. With thousands of engravers out there, I'll tell you what, Xtool came up with one that is perfect for my situation and might work out for you as well. I wanted something powerful, but yet still mobile. If you know anything or done some research about engravers, you'll know that you kind of got the bigger, the larger production type ones. Those are all CO2 type lasers. And then you've got the smaller, you know, desktop diodes. I didn't want a big old machine that would take up half my garage. That's what the welders are for. And obviously a little one, I wanted something with at least some power to make some cuts, just not to do engraving. So when Xtool first came to me, I actually turned down the two that they had and well, they came back and said, we came out with a new one that I think is perfect for your situation and boy, did they deliver. Now you would think having a P2 and a D1 already on the shelf, you would go right in the middle with maybe a J1. Well, no, it's the S1. Now there's been talk on what the S really stands for, or whether it's safety or switchable modules. Regardless, I'm not sure what it does stand for, but just so whether you care or not, the switchable models is that modules is actually a pretty cool thing to where you can switch out the dio head itself. And I did mention that, you know, the smaller ones were kind of diode lasers. Well, this one is a diode laser, but it goes up to 40 watts. So it's actually one of the biggest diode lasers I've seen. And with some of these extra features, I do think it is one of the best out there. Now, when I did hear that the S might stand for the safety, well, I didn't really care that much. You know, I wasn't thinking safety type stuff, but once I started doing some longer type engravings, like some of these acrylic plates, which we'll get into that in a second, that yes, a dial laser can do clear acrylic, even though you probably can't see it with the whole light. I'll show you some still pictures. Yes, it does. It looks awesome. So when you are 45 minutes into a picture and it's only halfway done, well, that flame detection is actually pretty nice. Now, you know, you can go do whatever else you would be doing, still in the room, of course, because you shouldn't leave it unattended, as no one would, right? Couple other features you might notice. Well, this is a nice green tinted thing that's on purpose. It's got some type of protection in there, you know, to protect your eyes from the blue laser and it works well. Other, some of those open top lasers. Yes, you need glasses if you're gonna be looking at the freaking laser beam. So don't do that with open. By all means, stare away at this one. It's got a key to lock it, which I'm not quite sure why it's a USB piece, but either way, I'm just gonna always keep it in there because I don't wanna lose it. And of course, it's got a nice red safety push button for in the event that, I don't know, does catch fire, you got a quick stop right there. If you are by chance mid print and you wanna actually check it out to see how it's going, you can lift up the lid, it will stop the engraving, and then um, obviously take a look at whatever you wanted to, close the lid, hit resume, and it will keep going. Now, aside from all those lovely safety items, Let's go over some of the features that I actually like about this that I do think put it on the top versus some of the other ones I've seen. It's a diode laser with a full enclosure. Now with this full enclosure, you've actually got air assist and you've got a nice vent coming out the back. So, I mean, I'm out here in my garage, so I just put that hose right to the bottom of the garage and it goes out. I have yet to have any fumes, you know, zero smell or anything with that going and with the air assist on. Now for the air assist, um, it's actually its own little module. Now, some people don't like that it's not built in. Definitely not a deal breaker. I don't think it's that big of an issue. Just putting it off the side, I've got space, so it doesn't bother me. You can have a hardwired connection or you can just hook it up through Wi-Fi, which is nice. You don't have to have your printer right next to the engraver. One click autofocus, and it really is just as easy as one click. You move the module around, which, Yes, I did at first think, wait, are you really supposed to just move it around by hand? Yes, you do. And you get used to it. It's not that big of a deal. You move it to whatever piece you're going to be engraving, you click focus, and it does the rest. Now, I'm just breaking this bad boy in, and there are tons of other add-ons you can get with this sucker. Like, just for example, you can get the rotary thing to do rotary stuff, your tumblers, rings, all that, you know, all that fun jazz. Then you can also get a conveyor. So if you got super long type engravings, actually 
feeds your material through the engraver. Um, you can get the base to raise it up, which I actually have, but haven't had anything tall enough to actually put that one on. And then it also has the dynamic type engraving. So um, it's called dynamic force or focus, I believe. And that's just if you want to do curved, you know, bowls, spoons, that kind of stuff. Yep, it's got that option in there. It'll actually go kind of map out your piece and you hit print yet again. It really makes it so simple to be able to use which was one of the things that kind of took me so long to actually dive into engraving. And that's because, you know, all this stuff looks really cool online, but just diving into yet yeah, a whole nother piece of equipment and figuring it out, I was kind of hesitant to make that jump. And I don't know why I waited because really the software that comes with this, which I'm actually starting to like more than Lightburn, let's not dive too deep into this. Xtool has their own creative studio and I've used Lightburn before for other type stuff and and honestly, I was able to pick up the uh, Creative Studio no problem and figure it out. The best part is it's free. So you don't have to pay, I think it's like 40, 50 bucks for Lightburn. So just stick with the X tool, you're golden. If you have worked with any type of other laser or larger laser, let's just say the P2 from the X tool, well, that one actually has a camera to help you focus in, or I guess not focus, lay out your material. So you plop your material in there and, and who cares where you put it? You get the camera up and then you can place where you want your stuff engraved. Well, no camera on the S1, but it's almost just as simple. It's got a marking system. So you literally, you'll move the module to your piece and then you just start marking. And most of the time it's a rectangle and so you only need to mark two points and you're done. So you put it in one corner, mark it, put, move it to the other, mark it, and voila, that pops up on your computer and you've got now your material laid out so then you can move whatever you want engraved over it and thus takes care of the rest. It's a diode laser. now. Typically, that doesn't make that big of a difference unless you want to do some clear acrylic, let's just say. Um, so, well, they kind of have a couple workarounds. The one is that uh, one of the modules you can get is a 2-watt IR laser, not laser, just IR, infrared. So uh, what that does, it allows you to bump over to different types of materials like more metals and clear acry acrylics, that kind of stuff. Uh, now, as mentioned, uh, well, I've got this guy sitting right here, and I think I mentioned before, you probably can't see it. Um, this thing actually did turn out awesome. This is clear acrylic that I did with this. Now, the workaround is to be able to do that, um, since the diode or since the diode type laser, it goes through the acrylic, all you need to do is just put a backer or black cardstock behind it as you are engraving. Now with the S1 being out like less than six months, it's very new on the market. Now, partially one of the downsides to that is there's not a lot of people that have done a bunch of the guesswork for you yet. Meaning your material selection and settings list is a little minimal. Now they still do have a pretty good set selection list online, but let's just say you're gonna want to do a sample piece for every type of thickness and material that you've got. You know, whether it be acrylic, wood, all that fun stuff. I've got even got some uh, plywood, which it actually went through. Uh, I want to say this is three eighths. Uh, went through single pass, by the way. Either way. Now within that, I kind of just wanted to tote that Creative Studio yet again. It makes doing material test pieces a breeze. All you gotta do is just select whatever shape you want, whether you wanna cut it, score it, or engrave it, and just, you know, a couple of clicks of what settings you actually want it to go through, and that's it. So, is the S1 for you? Okay, well, let's make it simple. If you wanna do a whole bunch of production type work and do it full time, no. Skip this, go bump up to those CO2 lasers and you'll be good there. But if you just want to get into the market and even if you wanted or are looking at one of the smaller, like the D1, just a smaller desktop one, well, hey, just spend a little extra, bump it up to this guy. You'll love the safety, the layout, the extra features that this comes with. And it's also a great introduction type laser 
to get your foot in the door without having to spend tons of time wasted on on testing things out or figuring out how, how it works just don't let the manual fool you even though it looks like a big thick manual that comes in like 50 different languages so it's really easy to set up and not that hard to get going that's all i got thanks for watching we'll see you next time